Hi, today we're going to be talking about a brand new release from Generay AK230. This is the light. Not too long ago, I used to be shooting still with my Ari tungsten lighting because uh, most cases is still the most beautiful way to light a scene with, of course, the disadvantages of the light getting too hot and everything. Because as you know, a lot of LEDs on the market, they have flicker issues, just like the uh, popular, very popular Godox SL60W. But uh, those lights, they use something called uh, pulse width modulation, which is a weird technology that the LEDs will shut off on and on very fast. So that's how you dim the lights. I don't experience any flickering whatsoever with the aperture lights and also lights like this, right? So the aperture light is about $1,100 and this light is not really too shy behind. This is about $1,050. Sometimes it goes on sale and you can buy this light for a uh, lower price. So it comes with a reflector, an extra antenna to uh, put in the back here, a remote control, which lights up in blue. It comes with the uh, charger, the USB charger and the uh, power brick. And it comes with a single ballast, which means it doesn't have an additional power supply that you have to deal like the Aperture 300D. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer this light over the aperture. I thought this was a fan, which doesn't have any fan here. So this ballast is actually very silent. And uh, this is the uh, front of the unit here, or the back, whatever you want to say it. Uh, these lights do accept uh, V-mount batteries, but you have to buy two. They can only be powered by two of them, right? And here's the power. So when you are on the battery, you uh, switch to DC in the middle is completely off and also the AC okay and here's your antenna which is right here you can actually uh, hook this up for a longer range so I never found the need to uh, even install an antenna uh, up to I would say 50 feet I never needed to install that antenna but if you are further away from this uh, equipment here you can actually uh, hook up the antenna it has a uh, locking system here right which you put right on the back of the lights so this is not going anywhere you just uh, twist the lock and screw and here is the uh, very generous size power cord which i would say is about 15 feet plenty of reach and also the same thing with the cable here it has a decent amount of uh, cabling so when you're putting this thing on a stand you can put the ballast right under and then you can uh, I have a, a nine foot stand I could almost raise all the way up so I don't need to buy any extension cables I'm not sure if Junior Ray makes or, or offers a, a additional supply of accessories would be nice if they made a uh, extension for this for some reason in case you need extra heights and everything right and it also comes with a beautiful touchscreen remote. It's uh, backlit, very strongly backlit. You can actually go down, up and down. The intensity of the light, as you can see, right? And go up. So this light is actually 5600 Kelvin specific. So uh, this will work for other lights that you can vary the color temperature. But for this light, it's locked in uh, 5600 degrees Kelvin. And the only thing I don't like about this remote is because on the ballast, which is exactly the same blue touch screen, right? You can actually touch here, up and down. You can also dial from here, right? Uh, once you tap on this knob, the light will shut off, but the fan will continue, will continue to run, which is a good thing. So it allows you to cool off your lights while you're on a break or, or not doing anything with the lights. It's a good feature that I like that. If you don't want the fan or nothing at all, all you gotta do is uh, turn it off here, like this way, and everything shuts off, the fan and the light. While the light is on, either AC or DC, you uh, touch this button here, the, the light will go out, but the fan continues to run on the, on the light. Now, talking about fans, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned before that I did buy the uh, Aperture 300D and a month later I saw this option here. Uh, I bought this light when it was recently released, probably the second day b and Photo had this light in stock and then I bought it and I do extensive research on LEDs. I was looking for all kinds of uh, LEDs, prices, features and CRI, power output, light intensity, power consumption. And another nice thing that I see about this light here is that uh, when you mount a uh, fairly big softbox or a parabolic umbrella, 
this requires just a slight turn and this will hold very tightly unless you put a humongous parabolic umbrella uh, softbox the heavy types right so i would recommend in that case uh to avoid stress on the yoke so what you can do here when the light is mounted you can actually uh, add a little bit of weight to kind of counterbalance so you don't put a lot of stress on the yoke but i'm talking about a very large parabolic umbrella any light i don't care if it is the aperture gym bay generate godox it doesn't matter it will put a lot of stress on the yoke okay so again i would recommend to put a little bit of weight here but most soft boxes that i tried here up to like uh, 60 inches depending uh, on the depth of the, soft, the, of the soft box i didn't need anything whatsoever to put extra weight just for huge lights so the uh, reason why i prefer to stay with the generate and return the, the aperture 300d is because first of all this is also as much metal as the aperture has okay but this light it has one full stop of light output compared to the uh, aperture 300d and this is a 200 watt led so i don't know what what the thing is but this light is about a uh, full f-stop which means if you have the aperture and the generate lined up on the same line here you will have to put the aperture about a foot and a quarter to compete with the same light output so an, a full f-stop difference is a huge uh, plus because in situations when you do need all the power you, you can get for every dollar that these lights cost uh, the price of this light here is normally $1,050 the aperture is about $1,099 regular price sometimes this light goes on sale but I prefer this one I like the design and I also like the, F, the fact again that's uh, one f-stop brighter than the aperture so I believe I'm getting more buck for my money with this light so I decided to return the aperture and also for the reason that I don't have to deal with a power supply plus the ballast and this right this light only got this light and the ballast to deal with and uh, there are some lights on the market such as the uh, Jim Bay EF200 but the thing is when you have a ballast built in you're going to be dealing with more heat uh, heat issues so this is why uh having a, a separate ballast it's a little bit more work to set up the light but when you have a ballast uh, all, most uh, electronic components outside the light the heat management is better okay so this one is by the way a fantastic light so again little lights like this when you have everything built in including the uh, the little ballast that they put in here so it's a convenience that you have just have the uh, power here and then straight to the outlet right but you do want to have but you do want to have a ballast because it has a better heat management and less uh, fan to uh, make the light noisier right so this is why you have the ballast and also talking about fan between the aperture 300d and this light over here the fan seems to be a little bit quieter but they do run all the time and um, when you wear a lavalier microphone if you are very close to this light even with the aperture and all the similar lights in in this class and price range you will be able to hear the fan okay but when you use a super cardioid microphone you're not gonna hear anything whatsoever so in my other videos I have actually uh, modified the fans on this little cheapy budget lights right but they will never be something that you can even compare to the aperture or a generate light of this caliber here because you're gonna have to deal with uh, some more heating issues because the fan that I have to install here if you want less noise is uh, a little bit uh, you know it doesn't work that well okay so the fans that come with these lights over here Keep in mind that a light this powerful, you can't, there's no such thing as a completely silent light, even with a ballast, that's the way the nature of the, of the, uh, the thing is, okay? So uh, the fans of this light here is slightly quieter than the Aperture 300D uh, by, I would say, 20%. So I like the fan noise here better because it is less noise compared to the Aperture light. And a very nice carrying case. That's one last thing they need to worry about finding a bag for your light. It's always nice when the manufacturer supplies their own uh, bag, so it fits specifically 
uh, is designed specifically for the light. So when it comes to audio, I really care about sound and I try to uh, have the audio as clean as possible, so it really matters to me. Fan noise is very important, which they did a very good job with this light here. This fan, uh, there is some noise, and but it is as quiet as it can possibly be from a light of this power, right? 200, 300 watts of power output. There's no such thing yet with uh, today's technology to have a silent fan with a light this powerful. So uh, you, you will not hear the audio from this light when you're doing something uh, normal, like an interview like this. The softbox is about three feet away and the camera is about five feet, six feet away. But when you use a lavalier microphone, you might be able to hear not only um, a little bit of a fan or whatever that is, if you want to have uh, complete minimization of uh, audio background noise, uh, the way that I do my interviews is using a boom with a super cardioid microphone as close as it can get out of the frame from the uh, subject's mouth. I found this the most effective way to get uh, the cleanest audio without any fan noise in the background or any other things that might be happening around the studio or something that you can't control because the mic is pointing this way. So the microphone being uh, unidirectional, you only can get the audio from the person's mouth. So the closer you get to the person's mouth with the microphone, the better the uh, signal will be and it will minimize any background noise. And when you use a lavalier, because it is omnidirectional, you can capture a few noises that you don't want, right? But again, with the uh, fan noise, this is quieter by about 15-20% than the Aperture 300D. Again, these lights, they do have fans and they do need to be uh, spinning to uh, keep these lights cool, especially when you put a reflector, a gel, or, or even a softbox. You, you don't forget that you're actually suffocating the light here a little bit because there's not enough room for it to breathe, right? So when the light is just with the reflector itself, no problem. But when you put a uh, softbox or anything that uh, obstructs the, uh, the breathing thing on the light here, keep in mind that you, know, you need some kind of a fan here. Now for the remote control, what I got is a regular small uh, cell phone uh, case holder with leather and everything. So I slide the remote, which is exactly the size, and I close it so it doesn't scratch, it doesn't get bumped or stepped on or whatever. So uh, it's a pretty clever way to uh, house my little remote here. So I wish they include this. Uh, this review is 100% voluntary because I'm very happy with the light. I am not being paid by Generay and this light I bought it with my own money, so it's just uh, one more video to help you guys decide on what gear to buy, which I'm very happy with the uh, Generay. Um, before I bought this light, the first one that I tried with the Aperture 300D, I was very impressed with it, but until I saw this one here in my hands, I uh, prefer this simply because the output of this light is a full f-stop, if not an even a little bit brighter than the Aperture 300D, and this is a uh, generate 200 watt light competing with a 300 watt LED light, okay? So uh, the brighter the light, the better for the best bang for my buck, if you will. And as you can see here, this is 90% made of metal. Everything is metal, every side of this thing. The back is metal. The yoke is made of metal, which is aluminum, the metal I'm talking about. It also features a very nice uh, thing to lock here. So when you put the light on, you gotta press this down and then you tighten it up. So which means is if you accidentally have this loose, you cannot remove the light until you press this. I think this is a nice touch. Anything you put in front of this thing here will stay with a very simple tight tightening like that. So to show you guys the accuracy of uh, color temperature or CRI of this light over here, the Generay. And I decided to choose the worst camera in the world, which is a cell phone front camera. This is an iPhone I'm filming with. I'm gonna go back here. This is the daylight, and then this is the uh, Generay. There you go. Now I'm taking this outside, and it's about 5:30 in the afternoon, and I'm turning on the Generay again. Let's just see here. There you go.
So keep in mind the beam angle of this light is about 64 degrees, not 120 like the aperture and other lights are. Now the advantage that I see with the 64 beam angle, if you want a light that's more spottier than floodier, okay, if you want to, if you need to uh, use this light for more like stage kind of thing or to um, have a uh, more concentrated beam, this light is also for you. Now if you want a floodier, softer, wider spread, Generate just released the Generate Powerhouse, I think a couple weeks ago, which the beam angle is 120 degrees. I actually just found out uh, a couple of days ago, the beam angle of this light, somebody was uh, making a comment on one of my YouTube videos regarding these lights, but I never even notice that because when I put these lights on on a soft box or whatever, to me it's pretty wide. It doesn't matter if they say 64 degree beam angle here. To me, it doesn't it's not really uh, altering anything that I'm doing here compared to these lights here, the Jim Bay 200 uh, EF 200, the uh, Godox SL 60W. I don't know what the beam angle on these things, but uh, I'm pretty sure this one here is a wider beam angle. To me, they all look the same when I see the light being projected on the wall or on a sub subject's face. So if it is 64 degree or whatever, it doesn't really alter anything. So now I'm also curious to try the uh, Generate Powerhouse, which they just released, I think a, a week ago or whatever, that's uh, the BNA just got in stock. And that light is about 120 degrees. So would help probably to uh, provide a better light distribution inside the soft box. And there are some soft box that you can actually uh, get a, a piece of a highly reflected uh, little silver thing to, uh, to help to reflect on the sides of the uh, soft box, you know? So to me, I'm uh, pretty happy with this light and I have never had a problem with it. And of course, this is a Boas mount and it comes with this very nice and shallow reflector that you can put it here to protect the light and put it away. To put this away, make sure you store the light the way I'm showing you here. You gotta do it this way which will protect this pin from uh, eating up your foam that comes in the bag there. So this is the correct way to store it. Not this way with the light that way because the spin is gonna go you know, on, the, on the case. And I see a lot of people doing this wrong. I think even the manufacturer put the, uh, the light wrong in the case. It's supposed to be this way. So you put the light that way. You insert this way first and then uh, keep this, this loose. You put it that way and then you finish sealing the light this way, with the pin this way here, not this way, this way. Then the ballast comes with a nice uh, foam here, so when you put the cables and the power cord on top, it's not gonna scratch your light. It comes with a nice foam here that you can lay the cables on top without touching the beautiful finish of the light, which also helps for resale value, right? Because this is another thing that I do. I take a lot of good care of my equipment because I can sell this later almost at 90% of the price I paid for, pretty much everything from lavalier microphones, microphones, lighting, you know, so you should do the same. So if you like this video, please subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up because uh, all I'm trying to do here is to help the uh, uh, cinematography community to add more gear into their bag and uh, I really approve this light for most applications that I do and thank you for watching again and have a good day or good night.